The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning from the West Coast, everybody, and good afternoon to those of you further east. Thank you very much for setting some time aside from your day to, uh, to join us here. My name is Julius Walczynski. I'm the Marketing Automation Specialist here at Safe Fleet Sound, and I'll be the, uh, the MC for this webinar. Um, so yeah, after, after being at, back at the office for a few weeks, I am now back to working from home full-time again, as a number of uh, COVID cases in our province has uh, spiked recently. And I think uh, many of you here may be uh, experiencing the same. Uh, we also know that pretty much all of you are also seeing decreases in transit ridership, which is why we decided to, to put together this webinar. Uh, we wanted to, to help you by sharing ideas on how to rebuild trust with your riders so that they feel safe on your buses again, uh, knowing that the buses are disinfected and that the other riders are likely to, uh, to follow the, the special safety protocols. So throughout the webinar, my, uh, my colleagues, uh, John and Scott, whom I will um, introduce in just a second, they will share with you what they see being done out in the field, uh, the pros and cons of the tools and methods that they see being used, as well as some of, of the new tools that we feel could be, could be very useful to you. Okay, uh, we want this uh, webinar to be um, interactive, as, as interactive, interactive as possible with with, uh, with you, the audience, being on, on mute, but um, please ask questions. Uh, we will have lots of time at the end uh, to ask uh, for, for your questions. Uh, the, the content we have will take us about 35, 40 minutes to, to present, and we'll have uh, another 20 minutes at least to, uh, to answer your questions, so put your questions in there. Um, and if you, you can also use it, the chat function to, uh, to send me a message. Uh, if you have a poor network connection, you may want to switch your audio to a, to a phone. So just select the phone call uh, button and you will be given a, a phone number. You can, uh, you can call to, uh, to listen to us. And we will also have uh, a couple of interactive polls during the webinar. So you'll see a, like a poll question uh, pop up with four or five possible answers. Uh, we would love to hear hear from you, uh, hear uh, and understand what you're experiencing. So please participate on the polls. Just click uh, whatever uh, answer is most appropriate to you. All right. So uh, on the line uh, with me right now are my colleagues uh, John Robb and Scott Greenwald. Uh, hi, John. Hey, Julius. How are you? I am good. I am excited to uh, to see so many people register and, and join our webinar uh, today. How are you doing out east? Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah, doing great. Yeah, it sounds like we have uh, quite a record here for a transit um, webinar, upwards of 150, 60 people. So uh, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> um, as Julia said, my name is John Robb, uh, Regional Sales Manager uh, for the Northeast United States. Um, I uh, take care of all the states listed here and uh, very excited to be here. We have two uh, great solutions to talk through today um, with regards to rebuilding some trust in transit ridership. Um, I came, my background, I came from a uh, small uh, business consulting, uh, financial consulting role uh, for a number of years. So I really do enjoy sitting down with customers and uh, talking through their problems and their issues. and. Um, finding and implementing uh, solutions for them, and in this case, uh, safety and technology solutions uh, for fleets. So excited to be here. Thank you everybody for joining. And um, I'll let my colleague Scott introduce himself. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I uh, go any further, I just wanted to clarify the difference in pictures here. Uh, when they asked for pictures for us to be personable and sort of identify you know, how we are casually, this is how John looked before he is getting ready to go to the beach. So just to be clear, we are very different out west. We're a lot more casual on the west coast than they are on the east coast. It's very stringent. So, um, thanks, John. For, um, I'm, I, I love talking about uh, technology and, and how to reduce risk and what we do for a living uh, at Safely. But uh, my background has been in uh, operations and loss prevention, asset protection, uh, some customer success uh, thrown in there. And um, I've been doing this for a long time in terms of security and safety. Transit has its own um, unique 
issues that, uh, from a safety and uh, risk standpoint, uh, present themselves. But uh, I represent everything. I, I couldn't list all the states. John John listed all his states. I couldn't list all our, my states. Well, I'm from Wyoming West. Uh, there's a ton of states in there. And I work uh, the region with uh, Rick Goujon, who may sound familiar to you um, on the phone. So again, happy to be here and happy to present. Thanks for attending. Thanks, Scott. Uh, one quick uh, question from the audience already. Maybe I should have done this during the housekeeping. Uh, Stephen asks, will the recording be made available to those in attendance? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we will send a follow-up email likely tomorrow and maybe a, a couple of follow-up emails after after that as well. But tomorrow, e tomorrow's email will have a link to the recording. We're being recorded right now. All right, so that's uh, John and Scott introducing themselves. Uh, so let, let's, you know, we're going to be uh, captains obvious here for, for a brief moment, couple of slides. You guys all know this, but uh, we do have to set the table, uh, set the scenario for this webinar. So uh, I think, John, you're, you're going to be talking about this decrease in ridership, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I definitely don't want to dwell on the fact that we're seeing a major or have seen a major decrease in transit ridership over the course of, you know, the last couple of months. Um, you know, at least here in the Northeast, talking to many of my customers, you know, many of them are still seeing uh, ridership down, you know, 60, 70, 80 percent. Um, you know, luckily there are a few that have seen an uptick and, you know, perhaps that's what's, you know, being portrayed here in this uh, in this graph. Um, but I think the reality is that, you know, it's still a decrease and I think we need to work hard to, you know, put trust back into the uh, public's eyes and, and show them that it's it's safe to get on a train. It's safe to get on a bus and, and go where you need to go, um, you know, and, and to do it safely. So um, story in the Northeast, from my experience, has been, yes, ridership is still down. Um, you know, it's ticking up a little bit, but we really don't want to dwell on that, you know, today, but rather uh, talk about a couple of solutions um, that could help in uh, regaining some ridership. So, um, Scott, how about the West? Is that kind of the same same outlook? In terms of ridership, yeah, yeah it, it's absolutely uh, what we see in the West. I think your percentages uh, mirror what's going on out here. In fact, uh, you know, just recently, you know, a bunch of counties have closed down again uh, to their most stringent um, level uh, since the beginning of COVID. Uh, cases have spiked, but John's absolutely correct, uh, and, and Julia said, I think. Perfectly, Julius, right? Let's be Captain Obvious here that, you know, there's a real problem that everyone is facing. And John and I, uh, as the problem exists, uh, are looking to help people. We're, we're simply looking to, to give them some some tools and, and some ways to think about it. And so, you know, it really requires us, as, as you guys are seeing on this slide, it re requires us to really prove internally and externally you know the vehicles and passengers are safe right we're, we're used to, to visually inspecting an issue uh you know if it's a, a maintenance issue something that needs to be done a tire is flat or it's low tread um oil is low something is is wrong you can see it with your eyes but with covid it's really proving you know that you that something that you cannot see is not present Right, so something is evident by observation or, or not evident by observation is, is really a key to this whole problem that we're facing. So, um, you know, we now have to know if a vehicle's been sanitized. Um, and, you know, how do you get riders to understand your sanitization process so that they can ride with confidence? That's really um, what we're talking about today. And I think that there's some really good news. Um, you know, there's some uh, agencies that are doing it right and doing well uh, with their process and uh, have overcome some of these obstacles. Uh, now the question is, how do you get riders to understand what you've done? Yeah, ex exactly. And so that was the uh, West Coast perspective, the uh, East Coast perspective. I don't get out in, in the field being in marketing as much as uh, my colleagues online here, but the Canadian perspective from up here is, is pretty much the same. You know, we're, uh, I think here in British Columbia, we have the highest number of um, daily new cases since since this whole thing began right now, and and I know it's affecting the uh, uh, the transit ridership here uh, here as well. Um, so yes, Scott, you mentioned you know, how we need to uh, 
prove that the buses are safe again to uh, to the ridership. But the first step of that is being sure of that ourselves. So, um, uh, Scott, you will talk about verifying and proving that buses are disinfected and verifying internally. So, yeah, away you go. Yeah, yeah this is, um, you know, this is, um, we, we've laid out some issues, you know, at a very high level, but, you know, there's some detail here that, that you guys are involved with, and in, in, I'm talking about the audience, right? And there's some issues that you're facing now that you've had to face in, um, before, but now it, it was just so quick and you had to react so quickly. But this is both an internal and an external, you know, communication issue, right? So how do you, within the agency, make sure that a vehicle is ready to go for uh, riders? Um, you know, are you, are you literally having to move a vehicle from one location to another? I mean, just how do you get that done? And then the, the process um, of then communicating that to your riders, you know, how do you get that done? Um, so, you know, there are several success stories um, and people that are doing the right thing and doing this well. Um, and so that's what we, you know, we really want to talk about. Um, uh, this is such a multi-layered issue um, that the steps are necessary because of the risk to health, right? That's why we're all doing this. So it's mm -hmm. a very important issue. All right. So I promised a couple of polls. Here is the first one. Give me a second. I will launch it. Um, so yeah, Scott was talking about keeping track of bus disinfections. We're curious to hear how, how you guys do it. So you should see a, a poll up on your screen right now with five possible answers. And I see some votes coming in already, so that's great. Um, I'll, I'll take a time here to, to answer a question from the audience. Uh, we are, uh, Risha asks, we are having problems with passengers wearing masks on the buses. What can we do as a transit company? So I'll ask you to, to hold that thought because uh, I know that John will be talking about that in, in about five or ten minutes in, in his uh, section of the webinar. Um, so thank you for your question, Risha. We will definitely uh, address that in terms of what we see other transit agencies doing and what uh, how we think we, we, we could help with that as well. Okay, we got 45% uh, of you voting. Um, oh, well, yeah, it's mostly an American audience. Maybe they're, maybe they're done with voting already. They're tired of voting. <laughs> but if we could get at least another few percent of you, then we'll get a 50%. Okay, one more, one more. Come on, there we go, 50% of you voted. All right, I'm closing the poll in three, to one second here we go Julius it just you know if if you ever need a second career I'm, I'm thinking that uh auctioneer yeah uh, uh you know um I can't talk that fast it's uh <laughs> I've been speaking English uh for a long time but not quite all my life so I I think you totally have to be a born English speaker to be an auctioneer and speak that fast all right, um, you guys should be seeing the results of this poll. Uh, and wow, over half of you say, how do you keep track of bus disinfections? We don't. We trust that our disinfection schedules and procedures are followed. So 56% of you are doing this by trust. 22% uh, of you are using paper forms. 10% uh, of you have um, using an all-purpose digital tool like Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, 2% of you have a specialized vehicle inspection tool, and 10% um, of you have something that's other. Uh, any surprises here, um, John or Scott? I, I am a bit surprised at the, at the folks that are just trusting their existing procedures. That, that does surprise me a little bit. I would have thought that more um, paper would have been involved. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think that surprised me too. Uh, like when we were dis discussing this during the rehearsals, we thought, oh yeah, paper, paper, paper is going to win this poll. And paper paper is winning among the people who are using something, but um, yeah, more than half of you aren't using anything. All right, well, we've come to the right place for this webinar. Okay, I'm going to hide this poll and move to the next slide. So let's talk about sure. paper forms. 22% yeah, of you so, are using it. Yeah, we saw that, uh, 
you know, what uh, I, a lower percentage than I thought are using this method. And, and, you know, without sounding demeaning at all, I, I would consider, you know, paper to be sort of the Pony Express of information, right? So if an inspection sheet or, or piece of paper goes missing or lost, um, you know, on a theoretical basis, a, a vehicle could go out in and, um, and still be unsanitized from a sanitization standpoint. You may fix a flat tire, but uh, from knowing whether or not a, a vehicle is ready to go out and, uh, and take riders on, knowing that it's been sanitized is, is scary. And I would, I would want some uh, process or procedure, even if it was a paper, just to make sure that all the details of that process were being followed, right? Because it's uh, sanitizing a bus is, is a different, slightly different protocol than I think we're, we're all used to. So um, I think that there's a slide next, uh, Julius, that sort of talks about Google Sheets and um, and I would, I, would cons I would consider that an extension of paper, right? So if someone created in-house, um, you know, an Excel uh, spreadsheet uh, that folks are using, um, this is still a Pony Express method, in my opinion, because that piece of paper, that Excel spreadsheet, still has to be touched by several folks in the agency, right? The, the person doing the inspection, then um, you know the folks that need to do the sanitizing, and then uh, if it hasn't been sanitized, what the next step is? Where's that piece of paper go? There are just a lot of variables of that paper going missing. Yeah, and I know we talked. We talked about the old days, right? We used to have an inbox and an outbox of, of paper, and that this sort of seemed like an old methodology. And from from what what's capable today, at, from that vantage point. Yeah, uh, there's a, a comment here from uh, from Nathan. Uh, I'll read it out because it's uh, pertinent to, uh, to, to our discussion on paper. Uh, honestly, we have enough paper. All our drivers are concerned, so we put a pl plan in play and do clean the buses. In reality, paper does nothing if a person doesn't want to do it. Yeah. I would say that's, that's true. Okay. And so the th third method, which 2% of you are using, the specialized vehicle inspection tool. Yeah, so this is really where life gets interesting, I would say, for an agency is, um, you know, you can walk away from paper. There's, there, you know, there's a couple of different companies that do this, um, us being one, certainly, but uh, it's uh, a, a program specifically designed um, and customized for you to be able to know at any given time that, you know, that some are cloud-based and some don't require additional hardware on the bus. It's just a tablet. Some systems require you to have hardware on the bus as well. Ours don't, but um, this is where an agency can really turn around and be efficient when it comes to not only just vehicle inspections for COVID and sanitization, but just vehicle inspections in general. We're, we like it for sanitization because of the immediacy of the information to, you know, um, to the managers of maintenance, making sure that the vehicles have been done and, and, and a way to prove it without touching another piece of paper, right? It's all cloud-based going to a computer theoretically. So, and I've got, Julius, the next slide I think outlines um, uh, uh, visually how ours works. You know, so you have a tablet uh, on, uh, and that tablet is, uh, creating an inspection, um, you create your own questions and your own answers. It, it's cloud-based. As soon as you finish the uh, vehicle inspection and, and sanitization process and, and hit send or, or finished, um, that goes to the cloud and it's immediately available to uh, anyone uh, having access to the, the web. So with, um, with the proper credentials, of course. Um, but this is a very simple way of making sure that at any given time, um, someone can just ask the question, is bus number one, two, three finished? And, or is there a problem? Has it, you know, has, has, is it ready for service? And the immediacy of the information is what I love about it. I, I, um, as this was previously brought out, you know, paper is, is not the optimal 
um, tool that agencies want to use, right? If they if they don't want to use it, they're not gonna, and, and now you've got a gap potentially in, in your process. So I love this um, methodology because it allows an agency to, to be um, nimble and allows you to add or change questions as things come up. And as people know, COVID was um, a very dynamic uh, issue. So things were changing daily, weekly, and you may need to change your inspection of how you're reacting to COVID. Um, and so without having to um, call and get a lot of people involved, you can change questions um, on your uh, inspection and, and, and make that immediate. So this is what I love about it. So if you go to the next slide, um, Julius, then this really lays it out, you know, how it works. You know, you're, you know, once the inspection is done, if you have a, a, a failed item, for example, if um, a certain part of the bus just you ran out of disinfectant and you didn't get to a certain part of the bus, you can, you know, um, stop an inspection and, and people will know exactly where you were and where you need to start up again. And that's all available to you on a dashboard. Um, because all the information you're giving to uh, from an inspection is going to the cloud as soon as you hit send. So if you fail an inspection because you ran out of sanitization or, sa or ran out of cleaner and you're only halfway through the bus, you can fail that inspection and people will know, okay, the other half of the bus needs to get done. Only half of it got done. Um, so that's what I love about it. It's that it's just so simple. And if you um, go next, Julius, this is, this is how simple it is, is, you know, you, um, number one, it, it allows you to create, customize your own questions and answers, but you can also uh, visually show who's doing the inspection, what you want them to clean, for example. Um, and there is a GPS and a timer attached to this um, solution, so that if you know that an inspection uh, for sanitization takes, call it three minutes, um, and and you could, um, and you see that an inspection only took 15 seconds, uh, and you know based on GPS that it was done in somebody's office versus at a vehicle. That's going to be evident to you just um, within the system. So you can, as you're doing the inspection, take a video. There's a light on on your um, tablet so that if you need to take a picture of something uh, and it's low light, um, you can use that. Uh, light on the on the tablet to light it up and take a picture, take a video, um, and so that's what I love about it. It's it's nimble and it's super simple. Um, the training is usually handing somebody a tablet and saying, um, "Go do an inspection," and and usually by the end of that inspection, it's very clear how to how to get this done. Right. And so there's some good news out of this. Right. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I was sorry for for jumping in, but I guess that. Uh, going back to uh, to Nathan's comment about you know it just doesn't get done sometimes that the paper forms is uh, the simplicity of this encourages the inspection to actually get done right because it's it's an intuitive uh, system to use and there's a little bit of um, verification to make sure it gets done as well right you you mentioned the timer and then in the GPS location so that you can be absolutely confident that it actually did get done. That's a good point. Um, to, to double click on that, Julius. Yeah. Um, and yeah, before we uh, get to this case study, we have a couple of uh, comments from the uh, the audience uh, here. Um, Ronnie is saying that uh, we utilize a paper trail to keep us in operation. It's, it's a just in case, just in case the NCDOT, I guess that's the uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation, just in case they want troop uh, proof. So they're using a paper trail, and uh, Gary says that they use a, a fogging system, which uh, which also includes a, uh, a tracking system. So so yeah, thanks yeah. thanks for that, guys. We're uh, we're always curious to hear what's uh, what's happening out there, what you guys are using. And what Julius, is, if I if I I can't I can't speak to North Carolina Department of Transportation, but I can tell you that um, you know we have researched it in California, which is extremely stringent on on driver behavior and laws on everything 
Mm -hmm. um, that uh, this system, number one, does, although it is cloud-based, it does give you um, the option of printing uh, these inspections, right? So at your desktop, as you uh, sign into the cloud and you're in the system and you're looking at inspection, you have the opportunity to print it off. That's number one. Number two is that the California Highway Patrol, who's in charge of our uh, DOT inspections in California, is recognized uh, paperless as being a substitute. So they can uh, they can use uh, a computer and see a report uh, as opposed to having a piece of paper in their hand and they're fine with that. And the third thing I would say, which is the most important, is for DOT audits, <clears throat> they usually pick a percentage of uh, of, of the uh, transportation authority, right? So it's 10% of the vehicles or some percentage of the vehicles. Imagine if you're going to your DOT auditor and telling them, gee, instead of pulling just 10% of my records, what if I gave you an overview of my entire fleet, my response time, the types of issues, and you can certainly do your audit and uh, and follow a vehicle from a failed inspection to being maintained to back into service and you can follow that trail but i can show you on 10 percent of my vehicles but i can also show you my entire fleet on an uh using a dashboard and that's a very to me from a department of transportation standpoint is just so such a, a great thing yeah thanks thanks scott and, and before you jump into uh describing what the city of Commerce is doing. I have a comment here that I want to read out. I find it a little bit funny. Uh, we are using Graco paint sprayers converted to spray a disinfectant from Adam. And Adam, I am well familiar with Graco paint sprayers as a, a student. I, I painted houses and, and I managed my own um, house painting crew. And oh yeah, I work with Graco paint sprayers a lot, spraying huge walls out in the summer heat. That's a, that's an interesting idea, though. Thanks for that, Adam. All right, and so Julius, I'll add too. I'll, I'll add too that coming from you know previous career, uh, as I mentioned, like in the financial world and involved in audits and whatnot. Um, you know, it, Scott, like you said about being able to simply show this, you know, from an audit perspective of, hey, here's my entire fleet. Here's access to the portal that shows you everything that we've done with respect to disinfections or inspections, right? Depending on what we want to talk about, that's that's gold to to an audit right and just increases your chance of getting through that audit you know just uh much more easily you know to, to get through it so um or I, I think it was gary that mentioned the fogging systems um you know to be able to just jump into a portal and say these are the buses that were that were fogged right and these were the ones that were not versus uh shifting through paper i mean I, that's where i really see its use so Good point, Scott. <laughs> yeah, and, and what I would say is, you know, reach out to your Department of Transportation, and, and I would be happy, and, and I know John would as well, be happy to advocate with you uh, and explain the technology to any DOT uh, representative, because I think it would be well received. I know it would be well received, because they are not, they're, get, they're still getting it, what they got before. They're not missing anything. We're just giving you the option of not printing a piece of paper every single time you do an audit. You can have your auditor come in and he says, okay, I'm picking bus number one, two, three, four. Great, then print all of the paperwork for bus number one, two, three, four. So it'll save you, I know it'll save you a lot of money, but regardless of that, I, the next slide is, is, is the one that is like so exciting you know, after all this other technology because City of Commerce and Greg Guzman at City of Commerce deserves a ton of credit for this and his staff um, have taken this very seriously and they were the uh, one agency one of a couple of agencies that helped develop this technology uh, uh, that we're now using at safe fleet so we're very excited that uh, they took it extremely seriously and then they hired uh, not, didn't hire another company they they, uh, they bought product from another company that sanitizes their buses uh, and it's taken their, you know, anything that a customer touches, right, all the handrails and all that stuff, down to ER room standards. And, uh, you know, this company, uh, it's all they do for a living is sanitize, you know, health facilities and medical facilities. And there's gradations of what are acceptable levels 
um, right? So uh, there's, these are standard tests that are done in the industry if you're in food service or medical. So they don't make this stuff up. They're using uh, technology to solve their problems and the tablet-based system for them to do vehicle inspections is part of that whole process that they created to make them highly successful. So I applaud them and um, and I, I thank them for being a client. So um, Julius, I, I, I'm done. I'm ready for questions uh, after um, the next set of slides. But uh, I, I think John, I think you've got a lot to talk about with communicating once a vehicle has been sanitized properly. Now, now how do you get riders to understand what you've done and how do you get them back on the box? Exactly. Yeah. So this is this, Scott was talking about the first step. You know, knowing internally um, that that the, the buses are sanitized and perhaps you know having the the audit trail to prove it to uh, the here at Department of Transportation. But then, how do you communicate it to your ridership? So John, I'll let you take this away. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Julius. And 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 great point so far. Right. I mean, I'm I'm just looking back here. We got. Gary talking about using fogging systems, and uh, I apologize, I don't remember the individual's name who mentioned paint sprayers, and, and uh, Risha earlier on asked about, you know, how do we communicate all of our efforts to, to riders? Um, Scott brought up, you know, cleaning to the effect of getting these buses and, and uh, other modes of transportation down to ER standards, right? So the bottom line is that, you know, everybody on this call, all the agencies and those not even on this call are doing some rigorous cleaning, right? A lot of time, a lot of money, and uh, a lot of effort, right? To make sure that their trains, their buses, their other modes of transportation are in fact safe for the public to use, right? To get to work, to get to the store, to do wherever, to do what they need to do. So, um, you know, I, I think just a couple of questions that we've gotten, they prove that point that a lot of extra effort um, in, in recent months is being done. Um, and it, I think it needs to be effectively communicated to the public, right? I mean, it's one thing to say, hey, this bus has been cleaned, it's safe to ride, versus, you know, this bus has been disinfected to ER standards and it was disinfected, you know, twice so far today and it's going to be done once more before the end of shift, right? So I think the focus is, um, that all of these efforts are being done. I don't think there's a question there, but I think the focus needs to be is, are those efforts being communicated effectively to the public right. to regain that trust? And so, before we uh, move <laughs> to the next slide, you're, you're talking about these efforts. Uh, a comment from uh, from Ronnie here. Uh, we use one part Clorox, Lysol, and a fogger on an hourly and daily basis, right? So yeah, there's definitely a lot of effort wow. being, uh, yeah. being done there. So how do you communicate it? Next slide. <laughs> Sure. It, it, yeah, absolutely. You can go to the next slides. But uh, yeah, just to Ronnie's comment. I mean, Ronnie, uh, I'm not sure where, uh, you know, where where you're from in the in the U.S. or Canada. But um, I mean, that's that's a lot of time. That's a lot of money, right? And you want passengers to know that you're going through those efforts, right? It's, again, this bus is clean versus hey, we're using part Clorox and and whatever to clean this bus. Two different messages, right? Um, so I think two things to really communicate are one, what the agency is doing, uh, you know, to to make buses safe uh, for for ridership, but then also communicating the expectations of a passenger, right? We all know that our industry is essential, and and buses are still running even at a uh, you know reduced capacity, but there's still requirements um, that that need to be adhered to, um, and we all know what they are, right? I mean, we we see them everywhere: face coverings and masks, social distancing, you know, stay home if you're sick sit every other seat um, in, in some instances around the country and, and Canada still entering and exiting from the back door, um, you know, no fares, all of these things that are still taking place, um, at least in the Northeast. Scott, you can speak to the West, but, you know, a, a lot of what I'm seeing is kind of what's being portrayed in these images here is, is paper signs, um, you know, being kind of scotch taped all around a bus and a train, um, you know, speaking to these messages. So. Um, you know, being communicated, but perhaps not as as effective as as they could. Um, is that is that the case in the West, Scott? Is it still a lot of paper being taped around the bus? Yeah, uh, you know, it's sad that an agency will spend you know several hundred thousand dollars on a bus and then 
spend almost as much money with 3M putting scotch tape everywhere. It, it's sad, right? Because they, they're trying to do the right thing. And it, we were hit so quick that how do you react to this? And, and so paper was immediate. It was fast. You could print it at the, at the office, right? They didn't have to go right. anyplace right. else. And, and that's the sad part is that the buses don't look as nice as they could be. Right. And that's a good point. And it's actually going to make my uh, next point on this next slide here um, that, yeah, I mean, when you when you look at the amount of money that we are after the poll, I should say, <laughs> um, but when you look at the amount of money that we that we spend on buses and the effort that we put, you know, put into specking them out and and uh, the, the seats and the colors and, and what you want them to feel like for a passenger. Right. You want it to feel like a safe, clean environment. Um, I applaud everybody's efforts, and I think all of my colleagues do for the effort that our customers have taken to, uh, you know, to to communicate, um, you know, the the efforts that are being taken to clean buses. But we're just here to help to um, give an option to uh, to help and, and do it in a more effective way. So, um, so that's a good point, Scott. Joyce, yeah. do you want to run your poll, and then I'll yeah, I'll continue? yeah, we'll come back to uh, to paper in a moment. But Perfect. Now let's. Uh, Let's launch this poll. So, uh, which methods are you using to communicate with uh, with passengers? Uh, special signs in a bus, uh, special signs at the bus stop, advertising space above the windows, uh, or onboard monitors. And this should be like a, a multi-select uh, type of poll. So, if um, if you're using more than one of these methods, or maybe even all of them, then then you can definitely select uh, more than one. Um, all right. Uh, so we got uh, 30 seconds into the poll, we got 38% of you voting, and once again we're pre predicting that special signs in the bus will be will be the number one method, but um, our, our polling, our prediction was wrong last time, so curious to see what happens here. And we got more than 50% of people voting, so five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to close the poll. And I'm going to share the poll. There we go. So yeah, this time, no, no surprising, uh, almost all of you are posting special signs in the bus, 93%. Uh, 28% of you are also using special signs at the bus stops and using the, the advertising space above the windows. Um, and 14% of you, which is actually more than I thought, are using uh, onboard monitors. Any comments here, John, Scott? Uh, in interesting um, results. I mean, pretty much in line with what I was expecting, at least. I was expecting a very high number to be that option one about, you know, signs in a bus. Um, you know, at least from what I've been seeing in the Northeast. That's, you know, Scott, sounds like you would, you would, you'd agree, too, for the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would. But, you know, it is interesting. 7%, you know, aren't posting special signs. So does that right. mean that they haven't posted anything <clears throat> and are just – you know, hoping that riders understand that they are clean. That, that's a, that right. That seven percent is interesting, uh, and then the fourteen percent monitors is encouraging, right? That that folks are uh, are able to take advantage of that space and use it uh, against COVID. Yeah, and perhaps I should have had an other right. option on this poll because I have a couple of good uh, comments from the audience here. <laughs> David says that they are using social media and push notifications via a mo mobile ticketing app. That's a great idea. Um, and, and Frank uh, says uh, that they uh, communicate from the office when the client calls in. Uh, dispatch also lets them know. Th thanks for that, guys. Yeah, so social media, definitely. You know, what, what is everybody doing while uh, waiting at uh, the bus stop? They're looking at their phone, right? And especially if you have um, uh, um, ticketing um, a ticketing app uh, you can definitely use that as, as a to message as well cool all right let's go so let's let's talk about barriers to effective communication right so and thanks for running that poll Julius I mean that, those were um, yeah, interesting results so um, you know perhaps this goes towards that 93 percent you know posting signs within the bus and then um, still applies to those around the bus stops and whatnot, but you know I think we could agree uh, to a certain extent that there are barriers to effective communication, right? Um, again, I, I applaud everybody for their for their efforts, you know, since this whole thing started um, and the efforts to put to rapidly print signs out and, 
get them taped in the buses and whatnot to to communicate these messages. Um, you know, but when it comes to paper signs, right, at least the ones that I've seen, it's it's difficult, right? I mean, the wear and tear, they cost a lot of money, right? As soon as one, you know, gets kind of old looking and, and torn up a little bit um, and weathered, it needs to be replaced, right? So the cost of paper is not cheap. Um, difficult to manage, right? So, you know, are we constantly, you know, for the 93% out there, I'd be curious to almost have another poll to say, okay, how often is somebody going on that bus to check to make sure the signs are still present and they're, um, you know, they, they can still be read and, and whatnot. So um, perhaps that's part of the inspection process before a bus goes out nowadays, but I, I'd be curious to see, to see that as well. Um, you know, and, and like I mentioned, they begin to look sloppy. And another barrier is inattention um, of riders, right? I mean, you know, we all know that signs are everywhere. Every store, every gas station, every bus stop, you know, please uh, wear a mask and keep your distance. But a lot of people simply don't pay attention, which is, you know, which is kind of uh, sad, but, um, you know, just the, the world we live in. But there's also that language barrier. Um, I, I was at a customer in New England a couple of weeks ago, and they told me that they did a, uh, a very short study um, to try to figure out why people were boarding the bus. Um, they didn't have a mask on outside, the, you know, waiting for the bus, but they, they didn't put one on when they boarded either. And they were like, well, why? It just seems like common knowledge to wear a mask now in that public setting on the bus. And the study found that these riders, they simply couldn't read the sign that said, hey, please wear a mask. You know, they're, um, you know, it was just simply the words. So whether, um, you know, somebody couldn't read English or simply couldn't read or something like that, there was just that barrier of they could not read the sign. Um, you know, which uh, kind of leads me to my next point on the next slide, Julius, is um, an alternative to those barriers to effective communication with the paper signs that many of us are, are using is uh, display monitors. And this goes back to Risha's uh, question you know, early on in the webinar as to how do we communicate uh, everything that we're doing, Risha, here, here's, uh, here's the idea and, and how we can help is to um, use display monitors on buses, um, giving the ability to display images and videos, which can directly overcome those communication barriers that I just mentioned, right? It effectively gets rid of those sloppy paper forms that need to be constantly replaced as they weather and taped back up in the bus um, that looks sloppy, right? We spend a lot of money on these buses and then we have paper taped all over the place versus putting a nice, um, you know, a nice monitor in there to display a similar message. Um, you know, everybody can see this monitor on the, on the screen here, um, which clearly shows somebody disinfecting a bus. Um, it goes back to my comment earlier about, you know, there's a difference between saying this bus is clean versus showing how this bus has been cleaned, right? To the point of um, Gary's comment again about fogging systems and the paint sprayers and the Clorox solutions, right? This picture, I mean, if I personally, if I see this picture and I'm sitting on a bus, I'm saying, oh, wow, this bus was really clean, right? I mean, in depth, you know, disinfected. So it just gives that different, it, it builds trust with the rider as they're sitting there seeing, oh, wow, this bus was cleaned, you know, this morning. And this is what it looked like while it was being cleaned. We can show that video on, on this monitor. Um, as I said, you know, display that sanitation schedule, illustrate the mask and social distancing requirements, right? Rather than the words, please wear a mask and keep your distance, show it. Show a picture of a mask or show a video of somebody putting a mask on. Uh, the same customer that did that study is going to implement this uh, solution onto their fleet and they're actually going to take a video of somebody standing, you know, at a bus stop without a mask and then stepping onto a bus and they put a mask on and they go and sit down. That's the video that they're going to, sh to show on these monitors, right? So somebody sitting on the bus that's not wearing a mask could, you know, watch that and say, oh, wow, yeah, I need to have this on. So it gets rid of that language barrier, communication barrier of not being able to read whatever language the sign is, is in, right? Because we all know we can't we can't have 10 different languages being listed on paper around a bus, which simply not out of room. Um, and it also, you know, the display monitors also give the ability to update the messaging um, easily, you know, rather than having a team of people go out to 100, 200, 500 buses in a fleet, 
uh, we can simply have somebody at their computer designing the content to be displayed on these monitors and then simply um, publish all of that information to the entire fleet instantaneously uh, is kind of the goal here. So yeah. um, kind of laying, go ahead, Julius. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to say the the, the customer who is going to be using uh, the the videos that reminds me a little bit of uh, the airline industries, airlines, right? Like talk about an industry that uh, deals with multiple uh, languages and multiple language barriers. You know, on a given flight, uh, it's possible that many passengers don't understand the airline's uh, uh, language, so they have these really clear safety videos, mm -hmm. right? There's usually the uh, uh, the, the crew. Um, demonstrating the the seat belts and masks in the aisles, but there's also a really clear video uh, being displayed to to the passengers there, and that's that's how they found to uh, to overcome the language barriers. Yeah, that's a great point, and and actually, Julius, it reminds me. Of, I was on a plane yesterday, and uh, exactly, it's still the same. You know, loudspeaker speaking to the passengers, going through the safety. Uh, protocols and whatnot, but then also the flight attendant, you know, showing uh, without the use of words what needs to be happening, right? With the, you know, with your seatbelt and your your uh, oxygen mask and all those things, right? And they actually uh, acted out, if you will, putting a face covering or a mask on, um, different than the oxygen, different, you know, for for COVID use, right? And um, so same type of thing here, just for use in a in a train or a bus. So that, that's a great point. Um, so Next setting the stage slide. there for display monitors, I was going to yeah, introduce uh, Safely's um, solution to this and the way that we would like to help is, you know, I think Scott mentioned earlier in this uh, webinar that we're simply here to help, right? We, we, uh, we want to help everybody um, not only prove the fact that their, their fleet is clean and ready for public use um, and then it is safe to ride, but also to effectively communicate all of the efforts because as we've said, and I think we can all agree, that those efforts are rigorous. So um, we're here to help and how safely can do that is through our own display monitor line and our infotainment solutions, right? So two examples of the pictures here, um, these are two examples of our 32 inch monitors. Um, we have a 15, a 21 and a 32 um, where we can split these screens as you see here to not only show, you know, at the bottom, uh, for instance, a live video of a bus and above, you know, some uh, mask uh, requirements or uh, social distancing requirements as well. Um, you would have the ability to, uh, at any point, you know, put a video on this screen and have it loop through as other information um, is being displayed. You know, we obviously mentioned, you know, getting rid of words and uh, having video take their place. You could do that as well. Um, we just don't have a video to show here, but it is uh, definitely something that's that's um, that's out there and possible. So, the whole point is to uh, rebuild trust, enhance um, that passenger experience, enhance safety, um, increase passenger awareness, which you know, in with awareness should come better behavior, which is a goal, right? Just creating simply a safer environment for all passengers and drivers for that matter. Um, you'd have the ability, I mean, the, the customization of the content uh, that can go on these monitors is pretty much endless, uh, to be honest with everybody on this call. Um, you know, to the tune of displaying schedules and service updates, public messages, cleaning updates. Um, you know, it's any message that you want to get out to the public can be pushed and published to uh, these monitors at any time. Um, and then something else that kind of comes along with it that a couple of customers of ours are doing, um, which is very interesting, is is uh, they're actually creating a second revenue stream for them for themselves um, when it comes to onboard advertising. They're they're partnering with local businesses and different things around uh, their agency and uh, advertising for them, creating a uh, second revenue stream. So um, we're always happy to talk about, you know, the, the ways in which we can help. And I think this one is becoming more and more popular, especially in today's age, uh, when the importance of, you know, communicating and effectively communicating uh, cleaning efforts and, and covert relating instances uh, to the public is um, is really important. So. All right. Thank you very much, uh, John and Scott. So that was that was really the meat of the webinar there. That was the main uh, um, content. We'll get into the Q&A in, in just a few seconds. I see some good questions from Stephen and, and Nathan already uh, uh, and some more. So please, please keep them uh, coming. 
just a really quick 60-second uh, commercial break here, uh, John and Scott, I'll, I'll ask you to uh, uh, give an overview here. Yeah, um, I'll start on the overview of Safely. Uh, John will get into some of the technologies, but um, as you can see from this pie chart, we have a lot of different tools at our disposal. I mean, we're, we're not just into uh, cameras or video, um, although that, that is a lot of what we do. Um, we also have other things that Safely offers fleets, right? With lighting, et cetera. So, with all the things we offer, we support a lot of different vertical markets, and that's the right side of that pie chart where, you know, we do, uh, I think most of the people on this call, if not all, are are in the transit world, so that's the very top uh, right piece of pie, but we also do work with uh, waste and, and, and police, so we have a lot of vertical markets that we're integrating with our technology, not just um, transit. And we're able to leverage that technology from other verticals and bring it over as it makes sense to uh, the transit. Um, so over the last uh, year or so, you've seen the, the merge of Safe Fleet, of, of, sorry, Sayon and MobileView under just the Safe Fleet brand. Um, we have another video company that Safely um, owns called Coban, and over the next year or so, then that will fold under the umbrella of just Safely. So we'll take advantage of all the knowledge and understanding from video from police and bring it over to transit. So we talked to you today about some solutions um, above and beyond video, uh, but this gives you an overview of sort of who we are and what we do. and. The only thing I'd like to say about the bullet points is I think this is the first company I've ever worked in where there's more uh, product development and engineers than there are sales guys or support guys to the field. So we take innovation very seriously and um, and we've got some great products to keep clients safe. So I'm very proud to work here. John, tell me about the technology. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Scott. That was a uh, good overview. And this is uh, this is something that I speak about uh, pretty often when I'm talking with not only customers, but also prospects to our business is I often refer to it as the you know bumper to bumper one stop shop for safety and technology technology solutions. Um, you can kind of see from this picture here, and this is not even all encompassing of the products that we uh, engineer and sell, but um, you can see that there's solutions all around a transit bus and it's not only transit bus, but it's paratransit and vans and, and many, any, really any vehicle. Um, but, you know, we go anywhere from, you know, hatches and mirrors and lights. And then we dive into technology when it comes down to video surveillance and merge alert signs and sensors and all these types of things. And then we get into, you know, really heavy technology solutions when it comes to, you know, in view 360 bird's eye view monitoring of the vehicle or pedestrian detection and, and driver assistance and fleet management, all these things. So um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this um, because I know there are questions related to what we talked about today, but I rather, I just wanted to make it known to everybody that if you do have a need, um, you know, that is safety or technology related, um, I'm willing to bet that we do have a solution for you. So by all means, reach out uh, with questions. But um, with that, I'll uh, I'll turn it back to Julius. I think he has one more slide he wants to talk about, right? And then um, we'll open up the questions. Happy to answer anything. And uh, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks, John. Yeah, this is just a quick overview of, uh, of the kind of customers we have. And I, I want to show here that we deal with transit agents for GCs from the biggest ones on the continent to ones with just a handful of buses. It's uh, we have solutions for fleets, all fleet sizes, and uh, being diverse in the industry is very uh, important to us in uh, in the long term. Okay, we have a few minutes left for uh, for questions, so we'll jump right into them. Um, the first one is about the tablets for the vehicle inspection. This one comes from Stephen. So Stephen asks, how do these tablets handle cold weather when it gets down below zero at night while the vehicle is parked? Uh, that's a great question. I actually don't know the uh, limitation um, off the top of my head, but 
Uh, if you can get a hold of us somehow, I'd be happy to research it and get back to you. But I, that's a great question. I, in California, it's not what, something that uh, I get, but John, you'll probably get that question a lot, so be happy to research it and get back. <laughs> I, I was I was going to say I I probably see a little bit more cold weather than Scott does, but um, being from Pennsylvania, but I mean my my answer to that, Stephen, would be um, absolutely, and we can get back to you on the the actual spec related to um, you know its its temperature tolerance, right? But typically the ap application that we see is not to have tablets mounted in a vehicle. I think that's kind of where your question is stemming from, but rather have these tablets, you know, whether they be in the garage or at dispatch or something like that, where somebody's, um, you know, kind of checking in for their shift, grabbing a tablet, going out. Now, granted, they're going outside where it's cold and doing their uh, pre-trip inspection or post-trip or, um, you know, maintenance in the garage where, you know, they're not out there for a very long extended period of time in that cold weather. Um, you know, so that would kind of be my answer to that is they're not typically, um, outside for that long but um yeah as scott said happy to look up the specs and get back to you we we definitely will and, and in general the vehicle inspection tool is is an app that can also be used on your just android tablet but we do have uh special um uh, hardware uh, tablets ourselves that are uh probably more rugged than um than most uh, android t tablets out there and that that also have some other functionality uh that they can display Okay, our next question is from Nathan. Nathan, thank you for uh, uh, contributing so much uh, today. Uh, just curious, are you seeing any differences between fixed routes like bigger cities do compared to rural demand response transit systems? And I'm not sure if Nathan is talking about difference in um, messaging or the inspection process or both, so maybe we can assume both. What kind of differences are, are you guys seeing between the, the big uh, eight transit agencies and the small ones? Well, I'll speak to the vehicle inspection piece. Um, I'm speaking to a very large agency now and where the vehicle inspection tool makes sense to them is in their uh, remote locations. So, you know, they may have a handle on their big garage uh, where most of their vehicles are, but they have disparate uh, locations out and about, you know, 40, 70 miles away where it's just difficult to know what's going on. So this kind of um, device gives them eyes, situational awareness, if you will, uh, in remote locations where otherwise they wouldn't have it. Thanks, Scott. I think that's a good, good point, Scott. And I think, um, you know, especially in the Northeast, I mean, I, I see both, um, you know, city-like and, and not. Um, from an infotainment perspective, I think there's a, you know, there's a use case for both. I think regardless, um, you're going to enhance that passenger experience uh, with a display monitor. Um, you know, I think it's important to effectively communicate the cleanliness of the bus regardless of uh, a city or not, right? Um, you know, so I could see the use case for both. Uh, Nathan, if your questions regard, if it's regarding ridership, um, I see a little bit of both. I think it depends. I mean, I think the cities are, they're definitely down. Um, you know, maybe people are deciding to, you know, walk a little bit more than they are uh, taking the bus or, um, you know, rural, if it's on demand service, there's not as much demand for ridership, obviously. So those numbers are down, but, um, you know, if, if you want to chat more about your question, um, you know, put it in the uh, chat here and we can definitely address it. But from an infotainment perspective, I see use case for both. Great. Next question from uh, uh, Angela. Uh, can the driver make changes to the inspection form? Absolutely. Uh, and one of the advantages that we have over um, some competitors is that uh, there's a charge from our competitors to make changes. And that is part of our process is that we expect that you'll make changes and there is no extra charge. Thank you. And a follow-up question to that, Scott. Uh, when does the inspection report download to our software, or do I have to purchase new software? No, uh, the software is, um, you know, is available from uh, the App Store. Um, and if you, as Julius uh, mentioned, we do have a ruggedized tablet um, that we strongly suggest for a variety of reasons. Um, 
and um, that tablet, uh, once it hits Wi-Fi, will upload to the cloud and that report is available to you immediately. So on a theoretical basis, I could be doing a vehicle inspection, uh, finish the inspection, hit send, and literally within nanoseconds, you could be at your desk in a different part of the earth uh, uh, tied to the internet and see that report finished in real, almost real time. Thank you. I'll tie two questions together here, and I realize we're we're a minute over. So, uh, Scott and John, um, you guys can stay for a few more minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So just in case somebody has to hop off, I'll kind of uh, wrap it up here. We will s s stay longer, but I'll give the uh, the closing uh, spiel here. So, thank you for those of you who have to uh, go at the bottom of the hour. Uh, you will get an email tomorrow with um, or. Thursday at the latest with uh, with the recording and then throughout the next couple of weeks we'll also send you another email or two with um, some other useful resources. I think we have videos displaying um, some of the solutions we saw here, some brief demo videos as well as a, a white paper that uh, talks about um, the same topics as you saw on a, on a webinar so that should be of interest to you. So thank you and in the meantime let, let's, uh, let's get through, through more of these questions. So Dave from Alberta, Canada asks who can I speak to regarding a possible small small solution for our four vehicle on demand um, transit service? Uh, so, Dave, I will uh, forward uh, your information and your question to um, to Don uh, to Don Nelson, who is our representative in uh, in Alberta, Canada. So you'll hear from him soon. And a related question is: Is anyone available to come speak to me about these products? or will everything have to be done via a Zoom call? Um, yeah, I'll leave that one for Scott or John in person or via Zoom. Sure, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll speak for, um, or, yeah, Scott, you wanna start? Yeah, I'll, I'll speak for the entire team. I, I um, You know, there are six of us that handle the country. John and I just happen to handle each part of the, each coast, uh, but we have counterparts within the country. I think our preference as a team is to always meet in person if possible. Uh, what, what's been the impediment has been COVID um, and agencies not allowing uh, outside visitors. But assuming your agency is allowing outside visitors and give it enough time, I don't know anybody on our team that would rather do a Zoom call. I think we'd rather do it in face to face. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree, Scott. And I was gonna, I was gonna make the comment that, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's mo all of us pretty much are, are traveling, and that we want to see our customers. And I mean, I know for me personally, if uh, if somebody welcomes, you know, the chance to meet in person, I'm all for it, absolutely. So, um, you know, yeah, I think our preference is to meet in person, get to know people, and whatnot, and uh, you know, and and offer our help in any way possible. So, to answer that question, I, I don't remember who it was from Julius but absolutely does not need to be over Zoom. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, here's a question both for you S Scott and John as well as for for everybody who's uh, who's still left here. Um, has any agency hired temp workers to ride along on routes to sanitize between every passenger that alights? Our organization organization did it at the beginning around March. Now our drivers are sanitizing at each end of their routes. What are you guys seeing out there? I'll speak first. I, I haven't seen an outside agency uh, being used. I've seen them, you know, because ridership is down, they've leveraged existing employees um, to do extra sanitization. Uh, I haven't seen them hire external, but that's just, that doesn't mean it's not happening. Yeah, I've, I've, seen, I've seen actually the opposite, Scott. I've seen, um, some customers out here in the Northeast that they have hired uh, a third party to help with the cleaning efforts. But um, with respect to the question, I don't know if it, it was like a temp service that's riding along doing it after, you know, after a set period of time. I think it was more a third party doing it, you know, whether it would be, you know, in the morning and then in the afternoon and at night, something like that. But um, I have I have not seen anybody hiring any uh, hiring a third party or a temp agency for a ride along cleaning service. That's interesting. Right. Thank you for that question, Carleen. Let's see, next question. Um, another one from Ronnie, and this isn't really maybe our area of expertise, but 
perhaps we can uh, we can offer a little bit of advice. Um, how can you ensure vehicles are kept sanitized during the day, especially if the vehicles are out in service service for most part of the day? And I guess that ties into the last question, right? Some some people hired uh, temp temp workers for that. Uh, I'll, I'll speak for the city of commerce, um, and based on what they passed on to me, is their uh, the the cleaning system that they use lasts 24 hours. The, the the disinfectant adheres to the surface and keeps it sanitized for a period of time. Um, and they are testing those vehicles multiple times a day. So it's a matter of ensuring that they're clean because you're um, you're following up as opposed to hoping and praying. So they've used a, a chemical that lasts and then they're following up to make sure it lasts. Oh, that's interesting, Scott. So it's it's something that will keep disinfecting the surface even after it's been touched and, and maybe even rubbed a little, yes? Yes. Oh, that's... Terrific. I mean, you know, I let's, let's just be clear, right? This is, um, you know, it's not saying that someone could take sandpaper to it and yeah. still be sanitized, right? I mean, um, I, I think the normal use of, uh, of a, a handrail um, stays sanitized if it's in normal use, right? I think, if anything, if somebody comes along and really abuses it or just is hanging on to it with one hand for, you know, an hour, it could probably break that barrier. Mm -hmm. But... I think the normal use is what they're looking for, and and again, they're they're verifying uh, the cleanliness by testing the sanitization. It's it's no different than what uh, if anybody on this call has ever worked in a restaurant, right? There's you know if, if you're washing, rinsing, and sanitizing dishes, there's pH strips that tell you, oh, okay, this this water is at the right pH level to be actually sanitizing, right? So there are ways to test this stuff. It's it's more work, but the vehicle inspection process should contain some of that work. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Scott. Um, one of uh, our colleagues here is uh, chiming in, in with a comment. There are test efforts in BC, that's here in British Columbia, that uses copper on high touch surface because uh, right. viruses tend to die on, on copper. Yeah, I've, I've been reading about that, uh, and not that specific case, but just about general properties of, of, of copper. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for that comment there, Len. Um, all right, let, let me see, there's some other comments here. Thank you, thank you, Nathan. And Nathan is just co commenting that um, compared to large cities, um, comparing about the question comparing large cities to rural areas, uh, one county w that they serve, the largest town, has about 4,500 people, and everyone else is uh, scattered within the county in, in smaller towns, so so it has been tough. Um, okay. Uh, John, any... Uh, so you, you talked about the, that one uh, use case of uh, infotainment during uh, your presentation. Any, um, any other uh, examples of, of customers uh, using this? Infotainment system. Sure. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, yeah, I have um, customer in Massachusetts who is two of them actually, uh, who are currently using it um, and implementing it for the the use case that we talked about today, um, displaying uh, their cleaning schedule, uh, what they are doing to clean the bus, how they are cleaning the bus, and um, some of the feedback that they've been getting from riders has been uh, definitely a positive one. Um, you know, looking at these screens and and uh, being able to see, you know, what's being done versus just the idea of, oh, okay, this bus has been cleaned. You know, it's uh, definitely a different message and done in a more effective way. So um, those two customers, I know a couple of our colleagues, you know, surrounded or uh, in in the uh, United States and, and Canada have a couple other customers that are using it uh, for the same uh, use case. And I think they've experienced the same. Thank you. Um, all right, there's one more question from Chad, but I see Chad has left, so I will uh, make sure we uh, get back to him one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And a comment from Ronnie, mm -hmm. I think this was still during when we are talking about the vehicle inspection tool. To avoid a lawsuit, investing the few hundred dollars is worth it. Yes, absolutely, we agree. Um, and those are all the comments and questions we have. Thank you, everybody who, who's left. 
on your way out, you will have, uh, I think, a five-question exit survey uh, that uh, asks you questions about how, how you like this webinar, how useful it was, what would you like to see on a, on a future webinar, and also your, your interest in the, in the two uh, solutions that you saw here. So if you could fill that survey out, again, we, we love hearing any type of uh, feedback from you, so, so please do. And Scott, John, great job. Thank you, guys. Thank you for, uh, for, for presenting this. It was a really a uh, fun webinar uh, to be on, and a lot of people stayed late, and uh, um, we got a lot of questions. So great! Oh, it was very fun. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, yeah, thank you everybody. Appreciate you joining, and thank you, Julius, and thanks, Scott. Thanks, John. Right. Good afternoon, everybody, and see you next time.